Alrighty, diving right into our backwards design project, we'll do a brief overview of this. So first off, we're starting out with standard 8.PS2.3. It's talking about physics. It's for an eighth grade physical science class. Um, demonstration of an object in motion, describing the position, force, and direction of the object. The objectives we already went over in class, uh, I did take the feedback that I received in consideration with as the um, as the progression of events go throughout the lesson, I'm decreasing the accuracy with um, the complexity. So that I did change. Moving into our pretest, um, this is supposed to address the objectives of the lesson and kind of touch on what they know already. And so what I was hoping to accomplish with this is starting out with a bell ringer coming down here. This is how I would set it up. You have a five to 10 minutes to consider and answer the following. They have two questions. One, they have to complete in two to four complete sentences, describe what they believe force to be. They need to include an example. Um, so that way I can kind of gather information as far as whether or not they have any idea of what force could be, what did they, is it just gravity, is it more than one thing, that sort of thing. That's why I move into the second question, do you believe all forces to be the same, why and why not? So they have to answer in complete sentences, they need to kind of get the creative juices flowing and get their minds focused on what we are about to dive into. Moving on uh, from the pretest, there would be some sort of lesson with a PowerPoint um, and class activities, and this is where the formative assessments would occur. So these are, as students are continuing on throughout the lesson, you're trying to get adequate feedback and checking for understanding. So my way of doing that, I would think of um, asking them specific questions throughout the lesson. I put a couple here where do you believe that there is more than one type of force occurring during movement? or is a fill-in-the-blank type of force being exhibited in fill-in-the-blank movement? These are yes or no questions where they can answer with thumbs up, thumbs down, where they agree or don't agree, or uh, if they're neutral, I know that they are struggling with trying to put that concept into action. Um, one of the activities that I would add to this is vocabulary activity. This would allow for students to work and familiarize themselves with new terminology that we're going over. It also in integrates the um, new use of um, differential instruction by having different groups with different uh, forces that they'd have to research and then they would take that and explain it to the class. So it's kind of disseminating that, that overall activity to them. Um, lastly, I would also have them submit two sentences summarizing the lesson for the day, and I would use that as an exit ticket. That way I can gather feedback from my own lesson and see what do they think. Um, are they gr gas grasping the, the concept as a whole? So um, lastly, the post-test. This is where all of the information that uh, builds throughout the lesson comes together. They would need to submit a topic to me first so that I can approve the topic that they have. That allows them to have opportunity for feedback on their topics and then also allows for me to um, help them with any misconceptions that could occur. Um, what they need to do is demonstrate a moving object and label or define all forces that are acting on that object. They can draw one if they would prefer but there is a demonstration there. Um, so first they can create a scenario. Second, they identify all the forces within that object. They need to explain them and they need to use at least two forces um, total. So all of these things are great assessments to kind of relate back to the standard, um, especially with the objectives that were created out of the standard. That way they are defining, they're explaining, and then they can create their own. So we're, we're working on that higher order thinking. Um, all of these assessments, this is my explanation for all of those. And then lastly, um, that, this is how I would set the post assessment up. But all of these assessments would basically allow for students to um, have opportunity for feedback for myself and for them. Um, and it would direct the way that I would teach my class by um, helping me to um, monitor how things are going, but also if I needed to modify anything for different, different students or students that were struggling with the material. So uh, this is my thought process for the backwards design product, and I can't wait to hear some feedback on it. Thanks, guys.